Hey, this is Mead back for part three of building your own canvas, uh, and that is the priming section. Um, this is the other part where methods diverge. There aren't too many different ways of stretching canvas. It's pretty standardized. Everybody does about the same thing. Um, and then with priming, people tend to prime differently, um, which you would think is weird. They're, you're priming a canvas. How hard can it be? But there are a couple of concerns. Um, I'm gonna get up on my soapbox for a minute. Priming serves the function of uh, creating a physical barrier between the uh, canvas or panel and the paint that you put on top. You know, the, the canvas is right here, your primer is gonna sit on top and be a barrier, and then the paint is gonna go on top of that. The weaker that barrier is, uh, the worse your paint is gonna be. The paint's actually gonna soak through the primer and the, the panel and canvas is gonna like pull the moisture or oil out of that. If it's an oil painting that you're, that you're doing, it's gonna damage the panel or the canvas. It'll rot pretty quickly, uh, maybe about five or 10 years. Another thing that you wanna keep in mind is that if you buy a store-bought canvas, they basically put, uh, they spray just enough gesso to visually cover the canvas but they don't put it on enough to actually create a barrier. So if you do wanna buy a store-bought canvas for practice, that's cool, I'm down with that, it's quick. Um, and especially for your first few years of painting where you're um, just kind of like working through the motions and you're not really getting to the point where you're, you're really on your, your mission of, of content, what you can do is just take your store-bought one, put like three more coats of primer on it, and then go, and then you'll have like a really nice uh, surface to paint on. Um, another thing that people do is they, they sand their primer because they don't want the, the texture on the canvas. Um, that's really dangerous because, again, you're trying to build the physical, the physical barrier. With the first acrylic paintings um, that were done, the chemical bond between like the gesso and the acrylic wasn't there. They hadn't figured out the paint chemistry as well. The acrylic actually started to like bubble up um, uh, from the surfaces and, and it was quite uh, difficult for for uh, museum archivists to to fix. You want two types of bond when you when you paint. You want a physical bond and you want a chemical bond. Um, the chemical bond is basically taken care of by not introducing a lot of solvent into your um, into your paint on the first few layers. Like if you're using oil, you don't want to just dump mineral spirits in and start there. If you're using acrylic, you don't want to just like use a lot of water. Um, you can use some, but it's better to use mediums anyway. Those are the major concerns with priming, is creating a barrier and creating a surface on which uh, paint can, can bond to it. Generally, for uh, canvas, uh, I'm gonna use a old brush, and for panels, I will either use a sponge brush or a roller, depending on what I'm in the mood for that particular piece. So recently I've been using the Blick Pro White Gesso. Um, it's really excellent. Probably it could be better than Golden for a lot less money. Um, then we'll have to do a side-by-side -side comparison. But so far, from what I've seen, it has really great coverage. Um, you do want to use a quality primer. But the basic thing about priming, to be sure, is that you don't dilute your primer. You can tint it with acrylic if you want. I prefer not to. I like to do my initial layers in oil if I'm doing an oil painting. Um, but you may enjoy that, having a, a non-white background. But if you do that, you do need to mix it in a separate jar. I like to work directly out of the gallon. One of the things that you'll notice about this is when you begin the first layer of primer, you don't just start left to right. Um, the reason for that is the canvas tension. You start from the center, and especially on big canvases, this matters because you want the primer to dry in a very even way. And so you begin at the center and sort of work your way in circles around the canvas. Not a big deal for, for a tiny canvas, like a nine by 12 or something, but big when you get over four feet. Um, because it's sort of like a pair of jeans. When you get them wet and then they dry, they dry very like stiff and they pull tense and then they stretch out over time. Um, and as these, as canvas stretches naturally and expands and contracts based on humidity and temperature and everything, 
you want to have created a primer that is gonna kind of go with that. And if you create a, created a primer and a stretch that is uneven, you're gonna run into problems. Um, one of the things to also keep in mind is how you handle your edges. You always kind of want to paint the edge and a little bit of the surface at the same time so that you deal with any kind of drips and drabs that get stuck on the edges. And you'll see that as, as I kind of work my way around the edge, I'm very particular about um, whether I get a lot of extra texture buildup on the edge. Um, the other thing too is each time you go back, just use your clean brush and, and brush things out. As we go into the second layer, you'll notice that things go much faster. Um, the primer spreads better. It doesn't soak as much up. And so you begin to worry about texture buildup that you don't want. Maybe you've used too much on the second layer and you have to spread it more. Um, this is where you begin to decide, you know, what sort of texture marks do you want your primer to have? Do you want it to be random or organized? Um, and then by the time you get into layer three here, you really have to pay very good attention of whether you've gotten the full barrier you need and you need to be sure that you're not putting too much on there so that you don't introduce unnecessary and unwanted texture that you're going to have to fight when you go in and actually do your painting and so that's the main concern is to build up slowly build up your barriers and don't build unwanted textures into it and don't um, you know get extra dust and debris in there as well